Hello everybody, welcome to Comic Tropes, I'm your host Chris. Now I've got a question for you out there. How many of you know what the British Invasion is? Don't worry, it's not some sort of sci-fi idea where the UK unites to get revenge on us here in America for our daring to revolt. No, instead I'm talking about an event in comic books that happened in about the mid-80s, where a number of prominent British writers of comic books came here to work in the States, mostly for DC Comics. I'm talking about writers like Neil Gaiman, uh, Peter Milligan, Jamie Delano, and the subject of today's episode, Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison ended up achieving superstardom in comics with his run on books like JLA, Batman, and Superman. But his first work was updating a pretty minor character in the DC Universe, Animal Man. Despite being an early work by Grant, I think you can find examples of all of his tropes, or perhaps it's more fair to call them themes. We have a focus on naturalistic, believable dialogue, a use of obscure characters from the Silver Age of comics, a use of parallel realities, the story breaking the fourth wall and becoming a meta-narrative, and even the idea of the Omega Point. I want to take a look at all of these ideas, specifically through the lens of looking at issue number five of Animal Man, which is a great issue, single issue by Grant Morrison, but it's also just a fantastic comic book, period. And it's entitled The Coyote Gospel. So who is Animal Man? He's not a top-tier professional superhero. He's Buddy Baker, husband, father, occasionally employed stuntman. He can absorb the key attributes of any other living creatures in his vicinity and use them for about half an hour. So he can be strong, he can fly, he can heal, and so on. I wonder what it would be like to absorb the power of my cat. I'm hungry for more kibbles. Hmm, disappointing. He's somewhat directionless at the beginning of Grant Morrison's run, and he's decided to really give a go at being a superhero full-time. In the first story, he works with Star Labs, who are being targeted by some sort of powerful monster that we ultimately learn is pretty obscure Silver Age goofball hero, Buona Beast, and he's been driven mad. Animal Man emerges victorious, but not easily. So the very comic we're about to take a look at is an example of one of his tropes, which is a love of Silver Age characters and continuity. Uh, after he revived Animal Man, he went on to do Doom Patrol. Uh, he used characters like the Batmite and the Batman of Zurinar in his Batman run. Uh, All-Star Superman is very reminiscent of Silver Age Superman comics, so it's just an era that he seems to love and appreciate and he wants to put it into continuity and lock it in and give his take on these concepts. And that's what he's doing with Animal Man. In this story, The Coyote Gospel, we follow a trucker and a hitchhiker driving through the desert. The trucker preaches a bit to the hitchhiker about being smart and safe and how he found God thanks to his friend Billy, who even gave him a neato silver cross necklace. Then they accidentally hit something and keep on driving. That something is a large coyote who we see painfully knit himself back together from roadkill until he returns to his form as a man-sized bipedal coyote who wears a scroll around his neck. Next, we cut to a quick subplot at Buddy Baker's house where he's impulsively decided to remove all the meat from his house without consulting his wife. So this isn't really a trope, but it is worth noting that Grant Morrison, in his real life, is a vegetarian, and he ended up turning Animal Man into a vegetarian. Uh, he doesn't get too preachy. Instead, it seems to be legit based in his character. As in, Buddy Baker has a deep connection with animals, and he doesn't want to hurt animals. So it kind of makes sense that he'd go in this direction. Uh, again, not a trope because I don't think that Grant really pushes vegetarianism as an issue in his comics, but it is at least worth noting that something came from Grant Morrison's real life and made it into comics. Buddy's wife is upset for not consulting with her, and he flies off angry. We now cut back to the desert. The trucker is setting traps in the desert, and we hear his inner monologue. 
He's had a string of bad luck. He's lost his friend Billy to an everyday car accident. His mother has passed away due to cancer. And we even see that the hitchhiker he'd picked up had turned to prostitution and has been murdered. This has all led the trucker to believe that what he hit that day in the desert was actually the devil. And he's now determined to kill it because he believes that the devil has cursed him with ill fortune. I think that this is a Grant Morrison trope, and I mean that in a very positive way. He writes very believable, naturalistic dialogue uh, that suits the story. Um, another example would be uh, in We Three, he has cyborg pets as the main characters, and they talk in a very distinct uh, pattern. Um, something like All-Star Superman, uh, he gives certain dialogue to, to Superman that's idealistic, but relatable and believable. He makes Superman seem like an actual person who grew up in Kansas and happened to find that he had amazing powers and decided he wanted to help people. In other words, he, he isn't some sort of isolationist weirdo alien, you know. He just finds ways to make his characters talk that's very believable and I think that that's on display here with the trucker. The trucker shoots the coyote who falls off a cliff is hit with a boulder, and even sets off some explosives. So this is clearly a parody of the Wile E. Coyote character from the Roadrunner Looney Tunes cartoons. And this is sort of taken in the real world, you might say. So wait a minute, if he exists in the real world... Oh no. Animal Man notices the explosion while flying overhead, and he lands. Uh, the explosion has incapacitated the trucker, but the coyote has already healed from it. The coyote walks up to Animal Man and hands him the scroll around his neck, which is the titular Coyote Gospel. The Gospel explains that his name is Crafty, and he came from a cartoon world of meaningless and constant violence. Crafty decided one day that he was tired of it all and he takes an elevator to meet his cruel creator face-to-face, -face, depicted here as an artist. Crafty's God declares that he will send Crafty to the hell above, where violence has greater consequences, and he will suffer, but in return, it will bring peace to the beasts of the animated world. Crafty agrees to take on this suffering to heal his world, and is brought into Animal Man's reality. What? No. So this is a common theme in Grant Morrison comics, the idea of parallel or alternate realities. He's looked at it in Multiversity, 52, Action Comics. Definitely something he's very interested in. Now we cut to Animal Man looking at Crafty's gospel about the world and it's complete gibberish to Buddy. Then the trucker uses his last resort, a silver bullet which successfully kills Crafty. The camera pulls back, and we can see that Animal Man is being illustrated as a comic book. So the way it ends is definitely a clear example of breaking the fourth wall. I mean, we're made aware that what we're reading is literally a comic book. Uh, and that ended up sort of becoming a central thesis of this book. Animal Man eventually does become aware that he exists within a comic book, and he even confronts his creator, Grant Morrison, within the pages of the story. And it's really, really interesting, that idea of the creator and his creation meeting and having a conversation. It's kind of real, but it's just, it, it's mind-blowing. It really is. It's something that's, of course, been done before, but I don't think that there had ever been a prolonged meta-narrative uh, like this until Grant Morrison did it with Animal Man. And he also explored it uh, again in the future, sort of breaking that fourth wall. He did it in his issues of Zatanna. He did it in some Batman issues. So it's something he's interested in. This is also a look at a philosophical idea that Grant Morrison subscribes to, and it's infiltrated a lot of his work. The idea is known as the Omega Point, and in brief, the idea is that our world is moving, our whole universe, is moving towards a central point of order. That's known as the Omega Point. And the idea is that all of reality is being overseen by an outside 
uh, maybe creator, you could say, or, or more powerful being. It could be God, it could be maybe a sufficiently advanced race, maybe even humanity in the far future, is controlling everything and moving it towards this central point of unification. Uh, certainly the idea that there is a creator drawing Animal Man points towards that idea. Uh, and he used it again in his JLA run, especially in the arc um, known as The Rock of Ages. Uh, he used it in Batman, The Return of Bruce Wayne. Um, so it's an interesting philosophical idea. I don't know that there's any real science behind it, but it's something he subscribes to, and I think you can see it reflected in several pieces of his work. So I think that this is a fascinating single issue of a comic book because I believe it works on many different levels. I mean, you could see it as a simple satire of Looney Tunes. Or you could see it as something a little deeper, commenting on how the cartoons of the time had a lot of meaningless violence. There was, there was just constant uh, meaningless violence. It was how cartoons were at the time. Uh, you could look at it and, you know, comics at this point had a lot of superheroes that would die and then come back. Resurrection was just this sort of thing. It became a revolving door. And the fact that Crafty the Coyote keeps doing that, I think that that's definitely commenting on what was going on in comics at the time. Um, beyond that, I mean, the, the Christ analogy is quite obvious. Like, Crafty sacrifices himself to suffering to make the world better for his people. Um, so, so there's certainly that angle. There's, there's several angles you can analyze this issue uh, on, on all those different levels. If I were to look at it on any of those levels, I could easily make another video at least as long as this for each of those levels. Uh, so I recommend it. I think it's an interesting run. It was about like 26 issues or so. So it's not that intimidating to read his Animal Man run. And I think it holds up. You know, keep in mind, this was the late 80s. Um, okay, I thought of another angle. Uh, Crafty tries to relay his religion to Animal Man, and Animal Man sees it as complete gibberish. But, I mean, how hard is it for religions to convey what they believe to outsiders? I think that that's absolutely a real thing. The fact that this comic could accomplish that, that level of narrative in so few pages is very impressive to me. Um, Grant Morrison definitely became a superstar when he did stuff like JLA and Batman and Superman. But his earlier stuff on Doom Patrol, The Invisibles, um, this, Animal Man, the stuff basically sort of pre-Vertigo version of uh, DC Comics, that stuff's top-notch. I love it. I love it. I also strongly recommend We Three. Uh, now, the Sci-Fi Channel this week is um, starting a TV adaptation of one of Grant Morrison's uh, works. It was a limited series called Happy. It's about a disgraced cop who is confronted by a kidnapped girl's imaginary friend who is a flying blue unicorn called Happy. And Happy has come to recruit this guy to rescue the kidnapped girl. It's weird. Uh, I think it will probably use a lot of the sort of tropes and techniques that we've just talked about. They might be on display in the show. It will be interesting to see if that comes to pass. But uh, if you find this interesting, or if you're already a fan of Grant's, then it might be worth watching this show to see how that plays out, to see how it's adapted. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this look at Grant Morrison. Big fan. He's uh, definitely written a lot of great stuff. Some of his stuff is honestly so much of a head trip that it confuses me. So I won't say that I'm a fan of every single thing he's done. Some of it, it's beyond me. It's just too esoteric. But a lot of stuff he's done is great. And my personal favorite is probably All-Star Superman. 12-issue story where Superman gets sick and he's trying to either come up with a cure or find a suitable replacement to protect Earth once he's gone. Uh, and it's just the best version of Superman you've ever read. You don't have to have read any other Superman comics. It's all right there in those 12 issues. The origin takes like a page, two pages. It's, it's done in such brevity. It's crazy. All right, I've rambled plenty. 
Thank you for watching. Take a look at my Patreon if you haven't before. I do some exclusive content there. I'm working on an exclusive episode about Bawana Beast right now for my patrons. And uh, until next week, keep reading comics.